Hey, Sean here from speedcubereview.com. Some of you might remember the big data dump that happened where a ton of the best solvers and best solves in the world in history were reviewed and we got a ton of great data from it. Well, that has happened again, but now with, let's say, more casual solvers. So I'm just going to go through a lot of this. We're going to talk about some of this and see what's in here together. What it says in here is the Rcubers mod have been running the survey for the past five years, wrote and managed the bulk of it, and proofread this whole monster of a document. And thank you to a bunch of people who, I'll, I'll probably mispronounce these, these uh, aliases, uh, root. I'm going to put the name right here. Provides great ideas for the survey, help coordinate between the East and the West, and leverage his online standing and following to gather all the respondents across China. Justin Yang translated the survey into Mandarin and helped retranslate answers during the recombination and cleanup phase. And Basilio Norris is the one who's really behind a lot of this, the author of the document. So there's data from, from North America, South America, Africa, Europe, Asia, Australia... A big chunk of it is China and the United States. Okay, and some just some basic things. The average age of Cubers, 18.3. This is also for people who have filled out the survey. So, of course, much younger kids are not going to be online filling out these surveys on Reddit. But the average age for those who filled this out, 18.3 years old. Now, one thing that I find interesting is left-handed, right-handed, or ambidextrous. I'm definitely right-handed to a lot of things I do, but when I cube, I would say I'm ambidextrous. I do right-handed and left-handed elgs pretty much equally as fast. And if anything, I feel like it makes it easier for me to solve fast because I'm not worrying about just trying to accommodate it to the right hand. Now, people have their own opinions on that, but let's look at some data here. And three by three average by handedness. Left hand averaged about 18 seconds. Right-handed 17.83, and those who said they're ambidextrous was 17.15. So, one way or the other, at least people who filled out this survey, it was faster to be ambidextrous. I'm not saying, wait, how many people filled out the survey? I know I read it somewhere. Ah, oh, there it is. 1,501 participants. So, 1,500 people filled out the survey. So, out of 1,500 people is what we're checking. Again, we're talking about the average and the median, and it was basically the same between cubers on Reddit and cubers in China. There's a lot of interesting data in here. This is more about how cubing is throughout everyone's day-to-day -day life. So we have questions on how much people practice each day. And for me, it definitely fluctuates. There are days I practiced over four hours and days that I can't at all. So it's all over the place for me. And I like some of the notes in here. So when they take the average times for those who practice four hours a day, a couple hours a day, handful of solves a day, uh, the four hours a day is not the fastest. And there's a note that hardcore cubers doing four plus hours a day tend to be more at the beginning of their cubing career, hence the slightly slower times than those who solve a couple hours a day. This is where understanding how to read statistics and the data provided is important because someone could just look at that and say, oh, practicing more than two hours, practicing four plus hours is bad, but it's not saying it's bad, it's just relative to how long someone has been cubing. Now, I'm not gonna go through every single page of this, please check it out, I'll have links in the description to where you can see all of this. Okay, so let's get more to the numbers about puzzles. And most people obviously practice three by three, that is, it says 94% uh, practice 3x3 three three routinely. And then we have 2x2, two 4x4, two, four four, OH, Pure Minx, 5x5, five five, Skew, Mega Minx, and 5 Blind is the last one. I am sad to see FMC is only above Multi Blind, 4 Blind, and 5 Blind. I feel like FMC should be right at the top. Side note, let me grab a cube here. The reason why I think FMC should be by the top. Don't worry about getting a giant piece of paper out and going through all of that data and, and trying to write down inverse and skeletons and all of that stuff. No need for that. But what I think you should do is still practice doing fewest moves, whether it's block building or if you know EO and domino reduction. So we're going we're to do this real quick. I'm going to take a sidestep because I'm passionate about this. We're going to do... Uh, domino reduction or half turn if we can do that too that'll be interesting so first thing i'm going to do 
edge orientation. You can, I'll put a timestamp here where you can skip to if you really don't want to see me rant about this. Uh, one, two, three, four. Oh, this is a really good EO. Okay, edge is oriented. Then let's do some domino reduction. So we've got, now this, I, I'm not, I don't need to count moves for this because it's more of just practicing the technique, the idea of how to do this domino reduction. Not the most efficient, but domino reduction. Practice, practice fewest moves all of the time. If you're not, you're making me sad. <laughs> you don't want to do that. Um, oh yeah. Anyways, three blind and FMC are the most enticing events. Uh, so they actually, what events would you like to get into most? Three blind and FMC are the top. Yeah. Three blind is very easy to do. And what I mean by that is if you know how to do a few PLLs, Y and T, you can basically do three blind. You know, R is important and J can be helpful. So yeah. And then FMC, you know how to do FMC. Everyone already does. Link in the description to what I'm talking about for that. <laughs> Which events did you try but didn't like? Square one. Square. I'm in the same boat with that. I tried square one, thinking I'm going to love it. Hated it. Did not like it. Okay. The older we get, the larger the cubes become. In general, some events tend to skew younger or older. Rarely both with the exception of trusty old three by three. Uh, so what they're saying, what they mean by that is what age people like certain events. So younger people tend to like Pyraminx, OH. But when we get to things like three blind and large cubes, that's where uh, the the older generation likes to uh, solve some of those. Oh, this this is such good data. This is what I, I really I didn't even know was in here. The difference between your single average of five, average of 12, average of 100. I made a video on this. And it was talking about consistency, how people are really concerned about, oh, my times aren't good enough. My single is this, my average is this, but it's consistency of your average compared to your single seems to be almost the same across the board. And this data matches that. I believe I said single was about 60% of your global average or average of hundred, 63%. That's interesting. So. I'll have to recheck my numbers, but again, link in the description for the video I made on that. Fun watch. If you're averaging one minute or 10 seconds, this will, it'll apply to you. Though the percentages still hold for 1,500 people. For two by two, PBL and CLL are the faster ALG sets, averaging almost half a second faster than any other ALG sets or methods. So what they mean by that is people said what their global average is, and if you use OLL and PLL averaging five and a half seconds. Ortega 5.38, EG 5.4, PBL and CLL are around five. Now, that's really interesting. I think a lot of people who do EG are much, much, much faster. However, this is more the general population. So knowing EG doesn't automatically make you faster because there's that recognition time. CLL is something I've been getting more into just because I've been doing solves and doing CMLL. However, some of those algorithms are not very useful on two by two because of the movements that have to be done. But I do find when I can do a CLL or CMLL or COLL, my times on average are faster. Oh, there's no times here. Um, I would love to see times between left and right handed for OH. If that is somewhere, if you're put this together and watch this video, let me know if that data somewhere because it shows left handed OH solvers um, compared to right handed and left handed is more popular. I'm a right handed solver and I would love to see if there's a time difference between your average three by three and your OH. My guess is right handed is going to be on average slower because there's fewer people um, just in general, uh, that that's makes sense in my head of why that would be. But um, what the percentage is, if right-handed is really any different, I think people just make a much bigger deal out of it than it really is. Oh, this is fun. Four by four. The the quote at the top. We all use Yao, except for those of us who don't, who tend on average to be faster. Average four by four average. Yao sixty one seconds. Redux fifty nine and a half. Mayer fifty eight. Hoya sixty. K four sixty point two. This is the general population. Yes, more of the top solvers use Yao, but a uh, quick story I've told us other times. So I asked Felix and I asked um, Sebastian 
about using Hoya. Both of these people have had world records on 4x4. Neither of them have said that they, or both of them said that they have not even really tried it or experimented with it. So a lot of people say, oh, the top solvers don't use Hoya, so it's bad. No, most of the top solvers have never even tried it. <laughs> they're just used to Yao, so they're going to use Yao. But anyways, Hoya's fun. Use Hoya. Okay, three blind and averages. I might get back into three blind. It's it's easy to practice that. I mean, you just scramble it up and do a solve. And you know what? I'm going to do one right now. I have not done one in, oh, geez, probably a year and a half. So let's find out how this goes. If I remember how to do some of the algorithms, I don't even remember some of the M slice ones. Maybe I'll just do pure old Pacman, but here we go. I didn't even check that one. That was just a flip that I, I never marked that in my memo. That's what it was. I didn't check it. Everything else is great though. Okay. Cubers who regularly practice FMC for everyone. Uh, the average is around 29 mean a 332.5. Those are good times for people who regularly practice FMC. Say how many people, it doesn't say how many people specifically in that group. Okay, so this is a fascinating one. There we have times based on how much COLL you know, and those who are faster know more COLL. Does that mean people use them? That is debatable. I've been told not to use it. Sometimes I do use it because it's fun. <laughs> and I do feel like sometimes it's faster, but definitely sometimes it is slower because doing a awkward COLL followed by a Z permutation is not always better than doing a very basic OLL and an A perm or a J perm. Okay. I think that's about it for this video. We've gone through a lot. I've done a couple solves, which I haven't done in a while, and I messed up. Kind of messed up line. I would count that as a success. I for sure would count that as a success because I didn't mess up anything royally. Even if, like, so that, that flipped edge was because I just didn't see it and I didn't even put in my memo. It wasn't that I messed up the memo. But if I did, if I messed up one letter or two letters, call it a success at home because you basically solved the cube blind and it was just those couple little things there. It wasn't just a hot mess of puzzle by the end of it. So check this out. The work that goes into this sort of thing is insane and they're not getting paid for it. So definitely check it out. So thank you everyone who put this together. Uh, be on the lookout for things in the future where I don't know if I'm going to do charity drives. I might actually sell puzzles that I purchase. So I have to look at what those are. And I'm definitely going to give some stuff away. But besides that, links in the description to this, as well as a lot of the videos I talked about. Check out those videos. I'm very proud of a lot of the stuff I've done in the past. And thank you very much. Leave your thoughts and questions in the comment section below. Hit like, subscribe for more content like this in the future. And as always, stop by speedqbview.com for news and reviews.